Hi, this is Catherine, and today I'm going to answer a question from one of my subscribers. I am Catherine Weathersby, and I'm the box truck strategist. I am also a lead generation SEO expert, and I help people who are interested in becoming independent contractors or are currently independent contractors in the box truck sector. I also work with local business owners and I generate leads for home improvement type businesses. So whether as plumbers, movers, HVAC, whatever type of business that meets internet traffic and leads um, via social media, um, web 2.0, including search engine optimization, content writing in terms of articles and blogging. I have a very strong background in content. I am a journalist. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge, e-commerce, being Amazon, I am an Amazon seller. Also Shopify, um, experience, so I'm very experienced in e-commerce. The typical business should have five to, the typical person should have five to seven streams of income. And I'm gonna be doing a video soon about that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Today I'm here to answer a question of one of my subscribers and his name is Chris and he's in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So Chris, I wanna thank you first of all for subscribing to the channel. Um, and I hope you go over to Box Truck Strategist if you haven't already done so and subscribe to that channel as well. I'm going to leave a link in the description box of how you can request a one-on-one -on -one strategy for your box truck business with me. The link will be in the description. Please go over to Box Truck Strategist if you are interested in starting a business as an independent contractor in box truck um, box trucks or if you are a current box truck owner and you have run into some problems related to um, generating um, you know income revenue for your box truck business if you are a local business owner you can reach out to me through text and text me the word leads, L-E-A-D-S, and I will contact you within 24 hours. If you are looking to grow your existing uh, business or you have questions about your box truck, um, you know, in any regard, reach out to me through the comment section and I will do my best to answer your question. Um, hopefully when we get enough subscribers, we can start doing some live um, streams and you can interact with me. Um, but in the meantime, I do one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions. There is a fee. So when you fill out the application, go to the link that's in the application and you can request an appointment you pay your fee, so we set up the appointment, and we have our strategy session. In those strategy sessions, we will be discussing um, know your numbers, which a lot of people don't um, when they get into uh, this business model. Um, we'll discuss you know, possible contracts, depending on size of the truck that you're interested in, what type of freight you're interested in, and what type of companies are available to you in your uh, region. So you can reach out to me, like I said, the description box um, will have the link and you just click on the link and you can get in contact with me to set up a strategy session through completing the form. So, Chris wrote to me, good evening, Catherine. I subscribed to your channel a month ago. I've been watching your videos on how to start a bobtail truck business. I work for a contemporary furniture company in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm looking into investing in a delivery truck business. I run into so many 
bobtail owners out here in Dallas. Most drivers are telling me to buy a truck is going to save more in the future. I want to get your advice on leasing or buying. In an interview with Nebraska Furniture next week, so I just want to be prepared for the interview. I'm sorry I'm testing you late right now. Whenever you get free time, can you go over the pros and cons of being a owner operator? Okay, so Chris, thank you for writing me uh, in the comment section of one of my videos. And I hope you went over to Box Truck Strategist and you subscribed. Please like and share my videos. So, I'll go over some of the pros and cons of being a owner operator. One thing I would say right off the top is you have to, first of all, understand what you're getting yourself into. You're looking to advance a business, probably a billion dollar industry. Um, I, I wouldn't say probably, I know it's a billion dollar industry maybe trillion, you know, by the end of, you know, um, the 2000s. But what I will say is, uh, it's an industry that's well capitalized. They have a lot and a, lots of income. They have lots of revenue, lots of money. And so, if I was to stack what they have versus what your independent contractor has, it's quite a different a difference, you know, there's uh, pretty much, it's incongruent in terms of exactly what you're looking at. So you're looking at a warehouse full of merchandise and that merchandise probably is shipped in from, you know, other countries and it's coming into the U.S. through the ports or it is American made. But I would say for the most part, it's probably coming in from China or some other country. China being the biggest importer. And with this new um, tariffs that uh, the president is instituting, um, you know, we're going to see, we've already seen that, you know, there's some inflation and things are going to be a little more pricey. So having said that, I will say this about purchasing versus leasing. To start, I would first of all test the marketplace. So what do I mean by that? I would, before I would invest, I would test. And the reason I say that is because a lot of times companies will recruit you and they will tell you and promise you the moon. But when you actually step out of your probation um, period, that's when you really find out what the revenue potential is of your box truck business or your final mile business. Um, and so a lot of times what they'll do, they will put you through a training period and they will pay it, you know, the money that you make, okay? So that if they tell you, okay, you're going to make, we're going to use, for example, 1500 a month, what they will do, they will give you an incentive. And so if you don't actually make the 15 a month, they will add um, revenue to your, you know, weekly check or however you're paid and to make you, you know, reach the 1500 However, at some point, when you start, um, going out on your own and you know your training is behind you that's when you really find out what what your revenue is per week or per two weeks however you know they pay so when it comes to buying or purchasing versus leasing I would recommend leasing first and the reason I say that is because it's gonna allow you to really understand what the revenue model is. So recruiters are going to tell you basically what you want to hear. You know, they're going to tell you, oh, you, you know, you're going to be a millionaire, you know, in three years or whatever. 
Um, they don't necessarily say that, but based on the numbers they give you, you would pretty much think that it's going to add up to that. Now, there are ways to do it. I mean, if you have a fleet of trucks, of course, you're going to make more than a one man, one truck business model. So, yeah, if you have a fleet, yeah, you, 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 you know, you're going to monetize at a quicker pace. You know, you're still going to have sets of expenses, but you're going to have enough production where you can kind of overcome, you know, some of the um, costs that are going to be associated with it. But if you're a one man, one truck and you, you know, don't have capital to add on trucks right away, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging. Okay. To say the least, it's challenging. And um, you have to look at, you know, what the costs associated with the box truck business model are. So you're looking at, you know, fuel, you're looking at maintenance, um, if you are going to drive or if you're going to hire uh, 1099s to work for you, all those things have to be taken into consideration. And so... Of course, if you're leasing or renting a truck, you're going to have mileage, you know, costs. So in addition to the fee um, that you are going to be paying, your base fee for rental, on top of that, you have mileage, you have gas, and you will have to maintenance that truck. So, you know, ever so many miles, you're going to have to get an oil change for the truck. And it's a commercial oil change, so it's not like you know, fifty, sixty dollars. I mean, it's gonna be eighty, a hundred and such. Um, and also you're going to have to um, you know, do your payments weekly. Now, um some companies will allow you to do um, you know, every two to four weeks, you know, before they take out. So say you're starting out and say you have to wait two weeks for your first check, which most companies are gonna put you on a fourteen day um, pay cycle to start and then after that you'll get paid weekly so these are other things you have to look at when you're considering um, you know becoming an independent contractor now in terms of buying a truck um, to have your own truck is you know it's a good investment if you can buy it cash that's even better you know and just pay for it outright if not if you have to finance it you know, the, these are some of the things that you also have to take into consideration because when you finance a truck, so now you have a truck note, you have your um, maintenance, you have your uh, fuel cost, and you have your employee cost. So say you're going to drive the truck and you're going to have a helper, or you decide to have one man on each truck. It depends on what the freight is, if you'll need one or two people. So those are some of the considerations that you need to make um, when it comes to buying and leasing um, leasing of course you're going to have to pay for um, as I stated the mileage and the mileage can add up really fast you know people say oh it's only 12 15 20 cents a mile trust me that adds up very very fast it depends on your route and um, when you're starting out, a lot of times you may or may not have a route. So, you know, you don't know. It depends on where you live. But in Texas, I mean, you know, there can be some some routes that have locations that are 50 and so many miles apart. So, I mean, that's something you have to take into consideration when you're talking about lease versus purchase. You have to take into consideration the route. How far are the businesses apart? Um, how, how far do you have to travel each and every day? Do you have a set route or are you going in different directions on, on a daily basis? And if you're going to be delivering furniture, you're probably going to be going to residences. So, you know, that may be better um, because you may not have to travel as far. Or a lot of times, um, some companies will have a day where you don't, you know, you go out of town. So you do a long distance. And so you may do a long distance one day a week and then the rest of the day you are local. So that just depends. Um, 
that's something you have to talk to, you know, the company about when you go into your interview process. So those are some of the things that you want to take into consideration. But I will say test before you invest. So you want to test the market. You want to test the route. You want to test everything. You want to know your numbers. So if you go at least, I'd say, 30 to 60 to 90 days with leasing, it will give you a good indication about how much you are going to need to fuel your truck each week, um, how much maintenance, you know, is going to happen, how, how far you're going to have to travel, you know, how many times a week you're going to have to go to your furthest point. You're really gathering information. You're gathering data, you know, that you're going to be able to use um, to make some wise decisions in terms of the truck. You need to know, um, you know, how much fuel it's going to take because it's going to take quite a bit. Then you have to have your insurance and insurance is a huge cost if you don't know, you know, someone that can give you a decent rate. So you really have to shop around. But that is one of the things that I do discuss in the strategy session is um, insurance providers, um, knowing your numbers, you know, how to sit down and figure out how much you're going to spend per week. And it can vary from, you know, company to company. So um, it just depends on what their business model is and, you know, how far they really want you to travel, if you're going to be going to, uh, you know, familiar uh, routes or if they're going to have you go out further. Um, and, you know, the best thing I recommend is if you are looking at a particular company, Always talk to the drivers that currently work for those companies, you know. Um, if you can catch them early enough in the morning, you know, just ask them for, you know, five or ten minutes of their time. And find out from them exactly what's going on in the company. Um, you know, if they're making good revenue, um, you know, you can ask them, you know, what are some of the things that they like, what are some of the things they don't like. And so... Um, it's always good to talk to people that are currently at the company to find out exactly what, you know, the ins and outs are of the company and, you know, how much revenue. I mean, you don't have to ask them that point blank, but, you know, you can you can ask them to give you, you know, approximation of how much they do a week. Um, but one thing, and this is a bonus golden nugget that I want to give you, is that sometimes a company will... Uh, switching, you know, bait and switch. So they'll, you'll come in and they'll tell you that you're going to be delivering a certain item. And that item may be priced per delivery at one, you know, um, price point. And then they may have other products that they pay less for and it has a different price point. So they may initially start you off with the higher item. So say it's a furniture item. And say the furniture item, every time you deliver the furniture item, it's like $9.99, you know, per piece. And on the other hand, the lower price furniture item could be like $3, you know, per piece when you deliver that. So they may start you off initially giving you, you know, quite a bit of furniture or quite a, whatever the high, high end thing is. They may give you that, you know. Uh, to see, you know, how you do with it. And then they may mix in maybe their midpoint, lower point. So which means you'll be making less and you may have more deliveries because it's a smaller, you know, um, product. And so as you go on, when you really get into, you know, the swing and you get your route, it can become subjective. And what I mean by that, Instead of giving you the higher end pieces, they may give you the lower end pieces because at that point, you know, people with seniority usually are rewarded with the, the best revenue because they want to keep those people because they've been there the longest and, you know, they want to keep them happy. And so they may give you, you know, the items that you're not going to make as much revenue with. And so those are some of the pitfalls that can happen. And I'm sure there are a lot more um, that 
you know, you can have that strategy session, you know, you can ask and we can kind of go over, you know, how you can avoid those type of things. You have to be, um, you know, willing to um, be an advocate for your business. So you do have to speak up. If you see, you know, that, you know, you're not getting um, the type of products that you need to deliver to make a reasonable um, weekly income, those are the things that you have to go back to management about and you have to advocate, you know, for your business. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so you have to know your numbers. And I can't stress that enough. You have to know what you're spending. You have to know what your expenditures are. And you have to know what your revenue is. And you have to determine whether or not you are making a profit that's sizable enough for, say, one or two vehicles. And if you can grow your business, how fast can you grow it? So say, you know, they want you to have, say, a fleet of five trucks. You know, you have to understand your numbers and what your revenue is to see if, if there's even um, a future for you that you would want to stick around to add on, you know, two or three more trucks for that particular company. So once again, it comes back to profit. And so I hope that answers your question to test before you invest. If you're looking at trucks, Always put yourself in a position to lease first, to find out exactly what the revenue looks like, to find out exactly what your expenses, expenses, expenditures are going to be before you invest in a truck. Because I've had so many people call me recently saying that they have a truck, but they don't have any revenue. Okay, they have a truck, the truck is parked. And they don't have any work. So you want to make sure that you understand that, you know, what it's going to take, first of all, to be successful in a box truck business. And then secondly, you have to have skill sets. You have to be able to negotiate. You have to be able to ask for what you want. You have, <clears throat> you have to have communication skills and you have to have negotiation skills. Because only, you know, it's a survival of the fittest. And only those who are strong are going to be the ones who are going to be able to, um, you know, not only survive, but thrive in this industry. So I hope I answered your questions. Please go over to Box Truck Strategist and subscribe, like, and share. And go to the description box, click on the link. And we can get together on a one-hour strategy session, and I will go more in-depth about the steps that you need to take before you invest. Be sure you always test. So this is Captain Weathersby. Thank you for listening. I will leave the link in the description box. And if you have any questions, you can always comment on the video, and I will be glad to answer your question. At some point, I will be doing some live, so stay tuned, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and go to the description box and schedule your one-on-one -on -one strategy session. Chris, I wish you the best, and if you have any further questions, go to the description box and make an appointment, and I'll be glad to talk to you, and I wish you much success. This is Catherine. I'll talk to you guys soon.